Hello and welcome back to another video in the Moodle course development series. In this video, you'll be learning how to configure SCORM modules to work on your Moodle site. In the last video, you learned how to add the assignment activity to your course. Now you're going to learn about a more advanced activity type called a SCORM package. So let's start by taking a look at an example of a SCORM module set up on a Moodle site. Something important to know about the SCORM assignment is that the content is not created within Moodle. You have to use separate software such as Articulate, Adobe Captivate, Lectora, or any other e-learning authoring tool that is SCORM 1.2 compliant. It does require additional software, but SCORM tutorials are a great way to make content more feature-rich and interactive with different types of media and quizzing features while still tracking students' activity and their scores using Moodle. Because Moodle is SCORM 1.2 compliant, the possibilities are really endless depending on your abilities and the software you have access to. Learning how to use SCORM authoring software would require a whole separate class, so for the sake of this tutorial, we're only going to cover how to make the SCORM module work on your Moodle site. So let's go back to the course site, and we'll say that we already have our SCORM module published and ready to be added to our course. Just like adding any other activity, the first thing you'll need to do is turn editing on, and then we'll use the add a resource or activity option. So I'll go ahead and click turn editing on, and then we'll say I want to add it to this first section here, so I'll click the add an activity or resource option. And then I'm looking for this SCORM package option that you see here. So I'll click SCORM, and then I'll click Add. And then after clicking Add, we'll be brought to this screen where we'll want to start by entering a name and a description. And then after entering the name and description, we'll need to scroll down so we can upload the SCORM package and then select it. Now there's a very specific set of files that need to be zipped into what we call a SCORM package, and you'll need to follow the instructions for your specific SCORM authoring software to make sure you have the correct files in a zip package. So I'll go ahead and select the SCORM zip package that I already have uploaded to the system. So to do that, I'll click Choose a File. If you haven't already uploaded the SCORM package to a Moodle repository, then you'll need to upload the file using the Upload a File option so that you can select it to be used. And I've already got it uploaded in a SCORM Demos repository. So I'll select it here, and you can see it's a zip file. And then I'll click Select this file. OK, and there it is selected there. So then we'll move down to the display settings, and the first thing you'll need to decide is if you want the score module to appear in the current window, like it's embedded in the site, or if you want it to pop up in a new window. I'm going to go ahead and select current window for this example, so I can avoid any problems with pop-up blockers. And then if we scroll down, we've got the student skip content structure page. When students access the score module, you have the option of bringing them to the content structure page. The content structure page is an introductory page where they may be able to read a description and see the structure of the module. If you'd like them to skip this, just select Always from this menu. And I'll select Always so that they just go straight into the SCORM module. And then Preview Mode allows students to preview the SCORM module before they complete it for a grade. If you want to make sure your students complete it for a grade and don't accidentally preview it, then you may want to select No from here so they don't make that mistake. And if you want students to see how the sections of your SCORM module are structured on the Content Structure page or in the player, you can select Yes for these options. But now let's move down to the grade settings where we can configure the grading method and how many points it's worth. And just like with a quiz, you have several options for how many attempts are allowed and how the grade is determined for those attempts. I usually like to give students the highest grade they scored, but you also have several options here. Now we can scroll down to the additional settings section, where we can start by configuring how many attempts we want to allow. I'll go ahead and leave it so my students can complete it an unlimited number of times, and the system will keep their highest score. If you are using the Content Structure Entry page, you can choose to have your students' completion status displayed so that they can see if they have credit for completing it or if it's incomplete. And then we have the Force Completed option, which is used if the SCORM package doesn't handle multiple attempts well. This option can force it completed if your SCORM package tends to get stuck on incomplete after multiple attempts. The Force New Attempt option is also a useful option if you're allowing multiple attempts. This option will make it look like each attempt is a brand new one. If you're limiting the number of attempts, then you may want to use this lock after final attempt option so that they can't access it anymore once they've made their final attempt. And the last option in this section is auto continue, which can be used to automatically bring the student to the next SCORM package in the course if there is one. Since I don't have any other SCORM packages on the site, I'll go ahead and leave this as no. At this point, we have all of our key settings configured, so we can go ahead and click save and display to see how it looks. Okay, and because I'm the administrator, it brings me to the content structure page at first. And so if I want to enter it, I'll go ahead and click Enter here. And there it is. And you can see I have all these options on the side, and that's because I chose to have the menu displayed and to have the navigations appear. If I didn't select to have the navigation and content structure displayed, then it'll look something more like this. And your students can use the navigation options that you've built into the SCORM tutorial to use it. Okay, now it's time for a little practice. 
If you have SCORM authoring software available, test it out with Moodle by setting up a published SCORM module. If you're not familiar with SCORM authoring software, then do a little research to see if it's something you may want to offer on your Moodle site. In this video, you learned how to configure SCORM modules to work on your Moodle site. In the next section, you'll learn how to make your courses more social by adding social activities. That's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video.